Maybe you have already been in the situation that you want to salvage parts from a PCB and didn't care about the PCB itself that can be destroyed but uh, the board was very thick and the components were very hard to get out. For example with this PCB here it's a 2.5 millimeter thickness and under the microscope I could identify at least 12 layers here. With these multi-layer boards it can be very difficult to get the components out if you solder through hole components from the back side. Because of the through hole wires that I used a lot of heat energy goes uh, into the board itself and doesn't really contribute to the solder. So when you're going from the bottom uh, to desolder those components you're uh, going to, to burn the component to death basically. With a board, board thickness like this, 2.5 millimeters, it's about a hundred thou, you'll have to resort to something else. And I'm going to show you the method that I use sometimes. Um, it really depends on the situation. First, I will apply a lot of flux on the um, pins of the component that I want to desolder. And then I will solder from the top, not from the bottom. First, I apply a lot of flux to both pin sides. Then I've prepared a little bit of solder that I uh, tend to collect and um, I make those ingots myself and they come in very handy for a task like this here. So with the soldering iron I will first melt a little bit of my ingot and pour large drops on the pins here. and uh, you'll have to see that it really connects to the pins and I'm going to connect them all here. It's a really nice method to get out SMD parts too. Just cover all pins and solder and then desolder them. So, as you can see, the component is completely uh, soldered on both sides of the dip casing. And now I will use a screwdriver here um, to give me a kind of angle. And I will first melt one side completely. You notice that the solder will first, I mean, some of the heat will dissipate into the board itself. I'll do that until I hear a little click and then I go to the other side. Click. When you hear the click it means your component is moving so And we have the component free. It's better to heat the components once and uh, do it properly instead of using uh, mid or low temperature and uh, continue to burn the components for minutes and minutes. Um, in case you're wondering I'm using 320 degrees C here um, with my soldering iron. So this is a look at the PCB that I have broken apart with some pliers. You can nicely see the epoxy structure of the PCB itself and the look of it. And in the middle, this is where a through hole wire just basically came out. I'm going to show that into more detail later on.
it's really interesting to see how the epoxy behaves when it's broken apart. It's not a clean cut, but uh, rather uh, more like fiber. This is from the top again. And here's the through hole wire that came out of the board. It's made of copper and you can see why it really dissipates a lot of heat, especially when there's one of these on each pin. For size comparison, uh, the wire again on a one cent coin, they're about the size of a dime. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.